Hey there guys, this is Cole. Welcome back to another horror movie review. Today I'm reviewing one of my favorite Stephen King movies and one of my favorite horror movies of all time, The Original Pet Cemetery, which I have in this four movie collection, uh Stephen King movie collection with uh The Dead Zone, Pet Cemetery, Silver Bullet, and Graveyard Shift, which three of these I like. Eh, Graveyard Shift I couldn't really get into, but I like the other three here and and Pet Cemetery, this is a really good movie, and I do like the book as well. the The Pet Cemetery book is really good, but I really quite like the movie from the nineteen eighties. Now, this is a real. And when this movie came out, it got mixed. It got mixed reviews by critics. This movie got pretty much mixed reviews by critics and audiences, and. Uh, with uh, critics like, if I remember right, I don't think, I don't, I could be wrong, but I, I think Roger Ebert was not a fan of this movie, although I could be wrong, because I haven't looked up anything Roger Ebert related in quite a long time, so I could be wrong on that, but I really quite like this movie, uh, so, so what's the plot in the story, The Pet Cemetery? I mean, I mean, most of you probably already know what Pet Cemetery is, but for those who don't, it's it was basically a Stephen King novel written in the in nineteen eighty three, and then this is the movie adaptation from nineteen eighty nine. But so, the plot and story to Pet Cemetery. So the family. Sorry about that, I had to answer a text message, but the plot in the story to Pet Cemetery. so basically it's about this family, uh, the Creed's family, and basically, so the plot and story, the Creed's new home is built next to a notori to the notorious Pet Cemetery. only their mysterious uh, neighbor, uh, Judd, played by Fred Gwen, knows its dark secret, but soon... An unthinkable tragedy leads the family to hell and back. So yeah, and and yeah, uh, I this movie's got a pretty good cast. You got Fred Gwynn as a uh, Fred Gwynn as a uh, Judd. I can't for some reason I can't think of the actor who played uh, Lewis Creed, the main character, but uh, but he he. That group played him. I thought he was pretty good in the movie. So enough wasting time. Let's just get into the review. So the movie starts off with we're introduced to the Creed family or the Creeds where Lewis Creed and his wife, Rachel, uh, their kids, Gage and uh, and his daughter, basically, they move into this new house, which is uh close to a cemetery and their neighbor Fred Gwynn uh with their neighbor Judd played by Fred Gwynn knows about it and that cemetery is called the Pet Cemetery and so the movie starts like I said with them you know the family they're getting settled into their new house and uh their daughter is uh on the swing you know going up and down on it and then the dad tells her like uh like be careful on that but you know the stick, of course, as soon as he says that, like, not long after, the the branch that's, like, supporting the weight of, like, the tire swing breaks, and then she falls and hurts her leg, and she's like, ow, my leg, and stuff like that, and she's crying, and, like, this is a little girl who's, like, six to seven-ish, uh, somewhere around that age gap, and, uh, and the dad said, are you okay? And then Rachel, the wife, she s sees that their baby, Gage, who's, like, two years old, is about to run into the road and stuff like that, and and funny enough, uh, this kid actor who played Dage, a uh, Gage, <laughs> sorry, would eventually go to. Ev funny enough, this kid actor who played Gage would star in a uh, new Nightmare or the seventh entry in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Only five years after this, and that was the only uh. The only two Nightmare on Elm Street movies Wes Craven directed were the first one in New Nightmare, but I would like to at least review uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 and 3. I, Again, it's a lot of movies, so I don't know if I'll have all the time to review all of them, but I'll review as much as I can this year. But, 
But yeah, I thought I thought for like a ba I thought for like a kid actor who I I could be wrong. What I think the actor who played Gage, he was around two or three years old, something like that, when this movie came out, and he quite sold it in terms of performance as like a a kid actor. You could definitely buy him as that. And then so basically the kid Gage, you know, and also he's looking at the car and he sees uh the gray cat named Church, which. Church plays a main part in the story, but we'll get to that later, where, so Gage, you know, he's gonna run into the road and stuff like that, but then, uh, and then we're introduced to our neighbor, uh, Judd, played by Fred Gwynn, who basically runs, uh, and he rescues Gage, that way he doesn't get hit by the truck, and then he says, there you go, to your family now, and then, and then Judd, of course, introduces himself to the Creed's family and stuff like that. And then, you know, and all this stuff. And then later that day, you know, not not far into the movie, so a bunch of kids are carrying... So there's, like, this guy who's in a really horrible... Basically a really bad biking accident. It's so bad to the point where, where you can see part of the brain... Out out of the side of his head like this, like, bleeding and stuff. It's that bad. And basically, a bunch of kids are carrying him into the paramedic's office because, at the school, because Louis Creed is a doctor who works on this sort of medical stuff. And and then him and the nurses, they tell everyone to get out, and then it's just Louis, uh, Louis Creed and uh, this guy in the room, and then the guy, and, like, this is really good tension where... Where, but then, like, the the guy who's, like, so, like, supposed to be dead or, you know, something like that, like, uh, he, he comes back from the dead and he talks to Lewis, like, uh, he says, uh, this is a warning and stuff like this, like, and he, he's talking about there, the barrier should not be passed and stuff like that, which we'll get to more of what he means later, and then he passes out, but of course this freaks out Lewis, uh, and granted, he's the only one in the room. I mean, I would be freaked out if I saw something like that, too. And then later that day, you know, uh, so, so later that night, uh, Lewis Creed, he goes up to, uh, he basically goes up to Judge, Judd's house to talk about it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, when we're introduced to Judd early on in the movie, he introduces our characters to... He basically introduces our characters to the pet cemetery, uh, which is the little kid Gage, and uh, I, I don't know why. For some reason, the name of the little daughter is blanking on me, but but yeah, they go with and stuff like that, and then uh, and then you know, and then the daughter says, uh, "What does that sign say?" And then uh, Rachel says, "It's which is her mother says." It's a it's pet cemetery. It's misspelled, but that's what it says and stuff like that. And then Lois makes a joke. <laughs> he makes a really messed up joke that freaks out the kid and he's like, "No, I'm just kidding. This is a perfectly normal place and stuff like that." And then so, yeah, uh getting back to that and that and that guy who had the accident where part of his brain was exposed out of his head, that plays another main part into the story which we'll get to here. And then later that night, uh, and then basically during the day, you know, so Church, the cat, is basically hit and killed by a truck. Well, the, the cat is killed, basically. And so what happens is that, so Judd tells him about the pet cemetery that it can bring uh, animals back from the dead. But instead of the pet cemetery, he wants to bury the cat at the... He wants Lewis to bury the cat at the Indian burial ground, which, which you know, brings animals back from the dead. And then, you know, Lewis is like, you know, and what's this and stuff like that. And, and you know, but like this is, uh, and then, you know, like this is before the whole tragedy happens, which we'll get into later. And then, you know, they bury the cat there and then. And uh, and the dad, uh, Louis Creed, his uh, his kids are with their aunt and uncle and stuff like that. And then they were on a vacation. They get back to the airport, and then the daughter asks uh, her dad, Louis Creed, the main character, "Is Mister Church all right?" And then she said, and then he said, "Yes." 
And she's like, you promise? But, like, she gets this suspicion because, like, because she gets, like, she gets these nightmares about, like, the pet cemetery and stuff like that. And, you know, he's saying this stuff. But, you know, obviously, you know, Rachel doesn't believe in this uh, nonsense and stuff like that, that. That there's no resurrection and stuff like that. And then later in the movie, uh, the most tragic part of the movie, the little kid Gage uh, is flying a kite with his dad and stuff like that. And they're all talking, but it's too late and the dad cannot save his kid. His little two-year-old kid basically walks in the road and a guy, he sees it, but it's way too late to do a semi driver, a semi driver. He sees the kid, but it's way too late and way too fast to where even if he does p put the brakes on, it would not slow down. And then, of course, it kills the kid, but they don't show the kid getting killed on camera like they show it off camera. But basically, you see the little kid's shoe fly in the air covering covered in blood. And I thought the actor who played Lewis Creed really sold it. And like, this is a movie, I what I really like about this movie, I like the psychological nature. Uh, I like the psycho, I really like the psychology of this movie. Like, I really like the psychological type of horror stuff. And this leans into that. And getting back to his kid, like, I thought the actor who played Lewis Creed really sold it where... He was yelling, and then he was like, "No!" And then, and then he was yelling, "No!" at the top of his lungs. But like, but like his performance was so good, like you could feel, you could feel the emotion and grief once his son passed away. Like you really could. And like I, I felt really bad for this character. I really did. And then, so basically, you know, they go to his funeral and. uh and funny enough, the guy hosting the funeral is Stephen King, uh, who plays like the, who basically plays uh, the the funeral attendant, and which I thought was interesting because Stephen King wrote the Pet Cemetery book, so I'm like, okay, nice to see him as like uh, kind of like the, kind of like the guy in charge of this cemetery. So I'm like, that's nice, a nice little uh, cam Stephen King cameo here. And then basically at a wedding, not a wedding, the, the funeral, they take the casket with Gage's body inside and, you know, they're in church and stuff like that. And then uh, and then there's there's this guy who's like a complete a-hole who says to him, how could you let him get hit? Like he said, it's all your fault. And then he punches uh, Lewis in the face, which causes this whole commotion to happen in the church and stuff like that inside of the church building and stuff like that. And another thing, so Lewis is basically taking a bath. And uh, remember how I said the pet cemetery can bring dead animals back? Uh, yeah, that's what happens to the cat Mr. Church and stuff like that. And the cat Church, uh, basically the cat named Church, uh, basically kill like when we first see the appearance of it, like it's the next day, like the immediately the day after uh, Lewis buries it. We see the cat back from the dead with yellow glowing eyes and it freaks and it obviously, you know, of course, freaks out Lewis like, you know, like like there's some supernatural stuff going on here. And uh, and getting more into that, you know, not only does that happen, but it causes it causes a lot of terrible stuff to happen like Lewis, he's in a bathtub and then, like, a dead, bloody, torn-up rat is thrown in the bathtub by him, by the cat church. And then he yells at the cat to get out the bathroom, like, how did you get in here? Because he closed the door, so, like, unless the cat opened it, which we didn't see that, because the door was closed when we saw it, like, how did the cat get in there and stuff like that, but... And then the cat uh, scratches him in the face and stuff like that. And, of course, you know, like... And I really like the psychological nature of this movie because it really, and I think the answer is obviously yes, that it is better. Like this movie really begs the question sometimes. And, and I like, and even the guy, uh, even the, not only does the book have this quote, but also the poster, sometimes dead is better, which is said by, uh, which is basically said by this, uh, 
Judd guy played by Fred Gwynn. And I like the way he says it. Sometimes that is better. <laughs> I, I, he just has some quirky uh, charisma to him. And I liked that about his character. And then basically, you know, uh, stuff hits the fan. And it all goes really bad. And, and I really like, you know... <sighs> I'm trying to think because there's so much to process about this movie because it's a really good movie that really makes you think like it's that good of a movie but but yeah so the cat so the cat church uh basically you know basically what happens is that you know everything is getting much worse from here and we learn the backstory of uh zelda which zelda is one of the like Zelda is one of the creepiest movie characters up there with Freddy Krueger. Like, I don't care what anyone... I don't care what anyone says. Zelda... <laughs> Freddy Krueger has nothing on Zelda. Like, and granted, I prefer, like, between the two movies, I prefer A Nightmare on Elm Street, the, the one from the 80s. Like, obviously, it's the much... Be it's the better movie between the two, but in terms of, like, creep factor, I think that Zelda is honestly creepier than Freddy Krueger. Just my personal opinion. I know some people are going to think I'm smoking crack when I say that. But whatever. I don't care. I really don't. And then so this Zelda character. We learn the backstory with Rachel telling Lewis about, you know. Ra oh, and another thing. Uh, getting back to not long after Gage dies. Uh, basically, you know. Like the daughter of like. So. Yeah, the daughter of Lewis says, uh, can Gage come back? And then she says, she says, can't God make him come back? Can't, you know, can't I believe that God has the ability to bring him back and stuff like that? Like, this movie has some really deep message. Like, it really has some deep messages that I think a lot of, I think a lot of people really overlook this stuff. Uh, I, including film critics. I really do think a lot of people overlook these really good deep themes that are in this movie with because it has so many layers with its themes and that's what I really like about this movie and then so getting back to it uh so Zelda was basically so Rachel tells Lewis the story that when she was younger there was this sister she had Rachel but Rachel was really messed up like she basically had a spine that was twisted but it was in the shape of an s and that she couldn't leave bed, and that basically every day that uh that Rachel had to feed Zelda and stuff like that, and she didn't like it, and then Zelda said that you know you're gonna tell them that uh that you killed me and stuff like that, but then she dies and stuff like that, and but but of course you know that all doesn't go over that well and stuff like that. And then later in the movie, uh, getting back to more of a confrontation, we we eventually see uh, we eventually see Judd played by Fred Gwynn, who and I really like the so so getting back to it. So uh, Judd is basically like he gets the suspicion that something bad is going on. He heads over to the Creed's house. And then basically he sees the cat there and he's like, what are you doing there? But he's like, but he's kneeled down on the floor. And then Gage, of course, since Gage was, you know, dead and stuff like that. Obviously, Lewis buried his dead son to bring him back. But obviously, like, because we're given the backstory in this movie that, you know, it's better to leave stuff dead because. And I like this scene where I know this is a bit off a tangent, but this. This movie is such a deep themed layer movie that, you know, like there really is a lot to discuss about it. There is, but so basically Judd tells uh Lewis the story of like uh the first time that something like this happened and you know how how it was a terrible idea and he told him that you should not br you, so do not bring your son back, but of course he doesn't listen. And then getting back to that, so at the house, uh basically the little kid uh, Gage, who's, like, back from the dead, he basically takes, like, a little knife, and then he cut, and then, you know, like, you see the side of my foot here, of uh, this part, yeah, this part, he basically takes a knife, and he cuts that part open, 
and like which obviously hurts him and then Gage just like bites into uh fr bites into his uh neck and stuff like that killing Judd and I gotta say really good practical effects in this movie I will give you one of the this is probably the only flaw I have with this movie is that there is some times where there is some digital effects like Granted, it's not a lot, but there are some digital effects that do not age the best in this movie. Like, like some of the special effects, like, uh, like the, like the lightning storm, like that part doesn't really age well and some other stuff. But again, that's just a really small little nitpick to an otherwise really good movie. And then, you know, and then eventually, uh, Rachel gets home to Lewis and stuff like that. And then, uh, Lewis... No, no, she gets home, and then Rachel... And then Zelda's there, like, Oh, it's you, Rachel. You'll be able to... You'll... I'll make you exactly like me. I'll twist your spine. So you'll never be able to get out of bed. Never get out of bed. And it's like, oh, this this girl is creepy and stuff like that. And then getting back to that, and probably my favorite part of the whole movie is when Lewis uh, gets a call from his dead son. Like, he gets a call from his uh, dead little two-year-old kid, Gage, who says, he's, he says, I played with mommy. Like, he says, oh, hi there. And then uh, he said, where's mommy? And then he says, uh, what happened to mommy? And then Gage says, I played with mommy, and I played with church, too. And then, like, you said, do you want to play next, Daddy? And, like, and just, like, the way, like, something about the phone call conversation, like, on pen and paper, it's, like, the idea should see, the idea should seem silly about a kid talking to his dad, a two-year-old kid talking to his dad on the phone, but they find a way to make it creepy in the movie with the way he talks on the phone, and, like, and it's, like, oh, this, this is really messed up and stuff like that. And then basically Lewis he goes back to the house and stuff like that and then and then basically the dead body uh the dead body of Rachel falls out through the floor hanging by a rope and so getting to it so basically there's a syringe that you know can put animals and people to sleep that uh Lewis has because the the cat church I mentioned who came back from the dead uh Lewis found a way to put it to sleep and he plans to do the same thing to Gage, but obviously things don't quite go quite as well planned because they, because like for a two year old kid, despite the fact that Gage was only a baby, like he's, he's so strong, he's outpowering the dad, like because of the fact that he came back from the dead. And it's like this little kid's creepy and stuff like that. And I, and I thought the actor really sold, well, the, the kid actor really sold it. And then eventually, you know, he eventually Lewis stabs it in the kid's neck, but then the kid like just reacts like little crying, and then he says, "It's not fair, it's not fair," and he walks away. And then basically, uh, getting way back to the part I mentioned earlier in the movie that uh, that guy I mentioned who had half of his brain showing, part of the brain showing out of his head, like Lewis had visions of him and stuff like that because later in the movie. He says to Lewis, you were not supposed to go, you were not supposed to go past the boundaries and stuff like that. Or something, I'm, I'm not doing the best job saying these lines, but the movie does a better job of doing that. But then basically, and I like how dark and just messed up this ending is, where Lewis, he basically, there's his dead wife, Rachel, he's carrying her in a body bag, and he's gonna bury her at this uh, Indian burial ground. She comes back, and then, you know, Lewis is kissing her in the kitchen and stuff like that because he missed her. And then she basically picks up the knife, and then the screen cuts to black, and you can hear her stab him. And then the movie ends there, and I'm like, that was a really dark place to end the movie. But yeah, overall, I really like Pet Cemetery. I think it's a great movie. Uh, I liked, I liked the remake. I... I like the remake, but it's, of course, not as good as the original movie, but, and I know that there's a prequel to the remake coming out soon, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, which is supposed to come on Paramount Plus this, 
I think it's this October 6th. I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, that was my review of the original movie. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.